Today's lecture is on chemotaxis, poor responses, and error taxes. These topics can be found on Chapter 20 of your text. The lecture will focus on six major topics. These topics include bacteria measure changes in concentration over time, tumbling, proteins required for chemotaxis, model for chemotaxis, polar responses, and aerotaxis. In the previous lecture, we learned that microbes senses environmental signals. The signal include osmolarity, temperature, pH, oxygen, or nutrients such as glucose. Microorganisms possess sensor kinases in their cytoplasmic membranes that allow them to sense these signals. These signals direct their movement. For example, microbes will move towards a nutrient and it will move away from harmful substances. So why do bacteria move in the direction that they move? The answer is very complex. Some bacterial movements are influenced by chemical environment, a process called chemotaxis. Some bacteria move in response to light in their environment, a process called phototaxis. And some bacteria move in response to certain terminal electron acceptors, such as oxygen. Bacteria move in a direction that they move in response to environmental signals. Chemotaxis is a mechanism that microorganisms use in response to chemicals. It refers to the ability of microorganisms to move along a concentration gradient towards a chemical. These chemicals are also called chemoeffectors. Chemoeffectors can be attractants or repellents. For example, a nutrient is an attractant and a harmful substance is a repellent. Thus, positive chemotaxis is a movement towards an attractant, while negative chemotaxis is a movement away from the repellent. As bacteria swim along a concentration gradient, they are detecting the concentration of the chemoeffector over time they actually remember the previous concentration. For example, if a bacterium is swimming towards an attractant, it will detect increasing concentration of the attractant over time and will continue to move in the direction of the attractant. On the other hand, if a bacterium is swimming away from a repellent, it will detect a decreasing concentration over time and will continue to swim in the direction away from the repellent. Tumbling is a characteristic feature of the motility and chemotactic response of peritricously flagellated bacteria. Peritricously flagellated bacteria are microorganisms having a uniform distribution of flagella over their surface. E. coli is an example of peritricously flagellated bacteria. Tumbling occurs in positive chemotaxis as well as negative chemotaxis. However, the cells tumble less frequently during positive chemotaxis and more frequently during negative chemotaxis. In E. coli and many bacteria, they swim for a few seconds or less and then tumble. Swim and tumble, swim and tumble. In the presence of an attractant, there are more swim than tumbles. And in the presence of a repellent, there are less swim than tumbles. When the rotors of the flagella rotates counterclockwise, a helical wave travels outward from the cell, pushing the cell to move forward. The forward movement is called run or swim. On the other hand, when rotors rotate clockwise, the filaments undergo transition to a right-handed waveform, causing the flagella to fall apart and the cells to tumble. Thus, when the flagella rotate clockwise, 
they unwind and leave the filament bundle, the result is there is no longer coordinated flagellar movement and the cells move erratically for a fraction of a second. This is called tumbling. Then the flagella move counterclockwise again to reform the bundle and the cell runs again, but in a randomly different direction. In positive chemotaxis, or movement towards an attractant, the bacterium tends to lengthen its run to reduce the frequency of tumble. Thus, there are long runs and few tumbles. On the other hand, in negative chemotaxis, or movement towards the repellent, the bacterium shortens its runs and increases the frequency of tumble. Thus, there are short runs and many tumbles. Chemotaxis employs complex regulatory circuit involving proteins located in the cytoplasmic and inner membrane. The proteins in the inner membrane include methylated chemotaxis proteins, or MCPs, while proteins in the cytoplasm include Ka, Kw, Ky, Kz, Kr, and Kb. These proteins are encoded by genes Ka, KW, KY, KZ, KR, and KB. Deletion of any of the six K genes prevents chemotaxis without affecting motility. The cells will not be able to detect a concentration gradient. The K proteins are cytoplasmic proteins that are part of the signal transduction pathway between the attractant or repellent and the flagellar motor switch. It is governed by a two component regulatory system. Ka is the histidine kinase. It interacts with methylated chemotaxis proteins or MCPs, which are located in the inner membrane. It is a phosphate carrier that phosphorylates the response regulators. KY and KB are the response regulator proteins. They undergo phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. Phosphorylated KY binds to the flagella and stimulate clockwise movement. Phosphorylated KB demethylates the methylated chemotaxis proteins or MCPs. Methylated chemotaxis proteins, or MCPs, are membrane proteins involving chemotaxis. These proteins consist of a periplasmic domain and a cytoplasmic domain. The periplasmic domain, or the N-terminal region of the protein, interacts with chemoreceptors, while the cytoplasmic domain, or the C-terminal region of the protein, interacts with cytoplasmic components, such as Ka, and KW proteins. The C-terminal region consists of four or five glutamate residues, which are methylated or demethylated as part of the adoption response. Methylated chemotaxis proteins are also called chemoreceptors. They bind to the chemoeffectors such as aspartate, maltose, galactose, ribose, and oxygen. There are different kinds of MCPs or chemoreceptors found in the cytoplasmic membrane of bacteria. For example, the top chemoreceptor binds to dipeptides, which serve as an attractant for E. coli. Some chemoreceptors can bind to several types of chemoeffectors. For example, TSR chemoreceptor not only binds to serine, but it can also bind to other chemoreceptors, such as alanine, glycine, leucine, acetate, indole, and benzoate. Chemotaxis is governed by two-component regulatory system or two-component signaling pathway. The signaling cascade begins at the cell surface where there is an interaction between chemoeffector and a bacterial chemoreceptor. Ka is a large and complex histidine kinase that is able to phosphorylate its own histidine residues using ATP as its substrate. This autophosphorylation of Ka results in the phosphorylation of Ky, which is a monomeric protein that is unbound to Ka. Phosphorylated Ky has a decreased affinity for Ka. 
resulting in its dissociation from the membrane-associated care protein complex. In this unbound state, phosphorylated care Y rapidly diffuses to the flagellar switch proteins called fleeing proteins and functions as an allosteric regulator to induce clockwise rotation of the flagella. The overall effect is the tumbling of the bacterial cell. This process is the native state of the system and occurs without chemoreceptor stimulation. However, when the bacterial cell encounters an attractant or a repellent that binds to a specific chemoreceptor, a ligand-induced conformational change occurs in the chemoreceptor. These changes may include piston-like movements and rotation of the receptor protein, which serves as a signal to the intracellular Kf protein complex. This inhibits the kinase activity of the Ka protein, which will abrogate the production of phosphorylated Ky. Flagella motor proteins, in the absence of phosphorylated Ky regulation, produce counterclockwise flagella movements, which result in directed bacterial swimming. KSC determines the level of phosphorylated KY or KYP. It dephosphorylates KYP, which reduces the number of tumble signal. In the scenario where the bacterial chemoreceptor or MCP detects an attractant, KZ, which is a phosphatase, dephosphorylates KYP. This reduces the amount of phosphorylated KY and results in less tumble. Thus, in the presence of an attractant, the cell tends to lengthen its run to reduce the frequency of tumble, resulting in long runs and few tumbles. In the scenario where the bacterial chemoreceptor, or MCP, detects a repellent, KZ loses its activity and cannot dephosphorylate KYP. This increases the number of tumbles. Thus, in the presence of a repellent, the cell tends to shorten its run and increase the frequency of tumble, resulting in short runs and more tumbles. In summary, KZ is a phosphatase that dephosphorylates KYP, freeing it from flagella flame protein and restoring the counterclockwise rotation of the flagella to elicit running. Therefore, KZ influences the intracellular concentration of phosphorylated KY directly and it is capable of modulating the motion of the bacterial chemotaxis. The complexity of the signal transduction network that is responsible for chemotaxis lies within the mechanisms of its regulation. Factors that regulate intracellular phosphorylated KY or KYP concentration dictate the motion of the flagella and ultimately the movement of the bacterial cell. Phosphorylated KY concentrations are regulated by transmembrane signals that modulate the kinase activity of Ka. However, there are other Ka proteins other than KZ that are peripheral to the main signaling cascade that can also regulate the phosphorylated KY concentration. KR is a methyl transferase, while KB is a demethylase. They are responsible for the methylation state of the cytoplasmic domain of the chemoreceptors, or MCPs. Methylation of the chemoreceptor induces clockwise rotation of the flagella, whereas demethylation causes counterclockwise rotation. This is thought to occur via conformational changes of the chemoreceptor as a result of methylation and demethylation. The state of methylation of the receptor is important as it modifies the sensitivity of the chemoreceptor to prevent sensory saturation as the bacteria travel towards higher or lower concentrations. Moreover, it provides a mechanism of short-term memory, allowing the temporal comparisons of the stimulant concentration. Bacterial phototaxis refers to the ability of bacteria to sense light changes in their extracellular environment and to bias their motility towards or away from light. Phototactic responses are observed in many organisms such as serratia marcescens, tetrahema, euglena, rhodospirulum, and halobacteria. The behavior of phototaxis is a directed movement up a gradient to an increasing amount of light. This is analogous to positive chemotaxis in which light is the attractant rather than chemicals. This process can be demonstrated by the movement of rhodospirulum colonies towards a gradient of light over a two-hour time course. Rhodospirulum centenum is a phototropic bacterium. As you can see in this figure, 
Phototactic cells move in unison toward the light source on the right. So, bacterial cells are capable of positive and negative photoresponses. Positive phototaxis is the movement towards light, while negative phototaxis is the movement away from light. Cells are attracted by visible light and are repelled by UV light. Halobacteria are halophilic archaea that grow in the presence of high salt concentration. They are locotricously flagellated cells. This means that the cells contain flagellar filaments on one side of the cell. When the cell senses visible light, it moves towards the direction of light. The flagellar motor turns clockwise and the cell swims forward. On the other hand, when the cell senses UV light, it moves away from light. The flagella motor turns counterclockwise and the cell swims in reverse direction. Regulation of phototaxis is governed by two-component regulatory system or two-component signaling system. The signal is light. Rhodopsin is the photoreceptor, which is similar to chemoreceptors or MCPs and chemotaxis. And HDR is the sensor kinase, which is also similar to Ka protein in chemotaxis. The phototaxis signaling pathway utilizes part of the chemotaxis pathway. The sensor kinase HDR responds to the light-activated photoreceptor rhodopsin. It autophosphorylates and transmits the signal to KY, a component of chemotaxis, which directs the movement of the flagella. Scotophototaxis is a movement away from darkness. Photosynthetic bacteria such as Chromastrum, Tyrospirillum, and Rhodospirillum are capable of scotophobia. Scotophototaxis is a phenomenon observed under the microscope. Once a bacteria moves outside the illuminated area, it reverses direction and re-enters light. Scotophototaxis is not considered true phototaxis since the cells do not follow a gradient of light. Such movement is due to irrational fear of darkness or avoidance of darkness rather than movement along a gradient of light. Aerotaxis is the movement toward a gradient of oxygen. Aerotaxis utilizes an oxygen receptor, AER, which binds to oxygen. This system requires an electron transport system to reduce oxygen to water. It also requires a portion of the chemotaxis pathway, including Ka, Kw, and Ky. The sensor kinase Ka responds to oxygen-activated photoreceptor AER. It autophosphorylates and transmits a signal to Ky, which directs the movement of the flagella. Gliding motility is a process whereby a bacterium can move under its own power and surfaces. This type of motility does not involve the use of flagella, which is a more common means of motility in bacteria. Examples of organisms capable of gliding motility include Bacillatoria princeps, Flavobacterium jensoniae, and Mixococcus santus. Flavobacterium jensoniae possess specific motility proteins that are anchored in its cytoplasmic membrane and outer membrane. These proteins include GLD proteins, or gliding proteins, and SBRV proteins, or adhesins. GLD proteins are located in the outer membrane of the bacterium, while SBRB proteins are located in the cytoplasmic membrane of the bacterium. The GLD proteins bind to SBRB proteins and propel the cell to move forward. Gliding motility is an energy-driven process, and it is powered by energy from the proton motive force. Gliding motility in Oscillatoria princeps, a cyanobacterium, involved the ejection of a polysaccharide slime from the nozzles at both ends of the cell. The bacterium secretes polysaccharide on the outer surface of the cells as it glides. The polysaccharide propels the bacterium's filaments to glide on the surface of an agar, as shown in the figure. This figure shows you an atomic force micrograph of Mixococcus santus. Gliding motility in Mixococcus santus involves a type 4 pili and adhesion proteins. Note the polar location of retraction pili needed for gliding. 
The gliding process involves the extension and lengthening of the type 4 pili of Myxococcus santus. The pili secretes adhesive proteins which aid in the attachment of the pili on solid surface in front of the cell. The depolarization of the cell's filaments shortens the pili and pulls the cell to move forward. The pili then detaches from the solid surface and begin another round of extension and retraction.